boom! Back in the courtroom. How's it going, everybody? I'm up in the corner already. So before we get going, I have to pull up. This is completely unopened. I've not even pulled it open yet. And I have to figure out how to get through this space devil plastic. There. Pulling it off. And... Ha 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 ha. Crack it open. We've got our manuals and stuff. What do those look like? Anything? What is this? I'm gonna, pu I'm gonna pull this out before I look at the... Is This is the flimsiest. It's just like a sheet. Warning. Repetitive motion injuries and eye strain. Playing video games can make your muscles, joints, skin, or eyes hurt. Follow these instructions to avoid problems such as tendinitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, skin irritation, or eye strain. Yeah, right. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna pop out our good friend, Professor Layton, who is still in there. Last Spectre. And we're gonna put in this guy. Hey everybody, this is Wilbitz, and we are playing... What's this? Ace Attorney... Not Phoenix Wright. Apollo Justice? Who is this person who we've literally never heard of before? There's, um... Uh, I don't know. Let's just get started. There's no way they would just turn about Trump. I'm gonna assume the Hearthstone player, and not the politician. Or just the card game. Let's just jump in. Let's just go in on a game. Oh. Pablo Picasso. It's me, the artist. Whoa! That's pretty intense. We're playing cards while a pendulum swings. Yeah, I was right, it is a card game. Showdown time. I have cards. I also have cards! No! I didn't think he would have cards. You lose! You spilled wine on my apron. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Not me. Someone else. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? April 20th, 937 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Doink doink. Panicked. Bum sweaty. I can admit it. Mom's spaghetti. I'm nervous. Ah, good morning. Oh. G good morning, sir! You look tense. Justice. Wound up tight. Ooh, wound up, sir! N no, I'm loose! I'm fine! I'm fine! I'm fine! Apollo Justice! Oop. Let me show you my attorney's badge. Is that screeching noise? Is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess Justice doesn't start small, eh? It's your last name. I'm making the joke about your last name. I'm fine! I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fine. Ah, that explains it. Why I can know why everyone in the neighborhood was awake. I didn't have a certain rasping quality to your screech. <coughs> I overdid it again. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down if you get my drift. Drift gotten, sir! I, I'm all over that drift! As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes! Yes! I'm, I'm fine, sir! That's my catchphrase. If you haven't figured it out yet, I say that I'm fine. Uh, one more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. Oh! People might take you the wrong way. They might think that you are, in fact, not fine. 
No. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Who's the client? My name's Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. I just started. And today is my first trial. Ah. N not that I'm worried or anything. Not that I like you or anything. The defendant's been accused of... Murder. My boss wants to help him out, of course. And so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. <laughs> Hold on. So, slight spoilers. I knew this was coming. And I may have prepared for this eventuality. So. Ugh. Oh, it's all mirrored. Because it's that. Hey. What's up? Oh no. It's a hobo. In the courtroom. Okay. Well. Whoa! Huh? Uh, good, uh, good morning. Good morning. It's all up to you today. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. I think I'm supposed to say something? Uh, help? So you're, um... Fine! I'm, I'm fine! Uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Um, I didn't remember you having an odd name. Well, we're up to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Uh, Mr. Gavin's a top-notch defense attorney, and he's your friend, so why? You'll see. Huh? You can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean, I mean, I... It's time, shall we? Y yes, sir. Okay, I need to focus. First trial, here comes justice. District court, courtroom number two. The court is now in session. Uh, the prosecution's ready, Your Honor. Wow. This is, I think, the most ridiculous looking one yet. Uh, the defense is, uh, fine? I mean, ready. Ready, Your Honor. Mind going blank? Don't panic. <sighs> too late, too late. Your name was, um, Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial? I yes, yes, Your Honor. But I'm fine, really. Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. <coughs> <clears throat> uh, Mr. Gavin? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always see to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice. But to entrust his case to this greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you are the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine, but does he have cords of steel? Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. <laughs> hey. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. What has happened? What has happened to you? I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. In case you hadn't figured it out yet, this is the cruel remains of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne... Thank I saw you under this room, a fresh attorney, and now I leave you I see you leave in chains. <laughs> Winston Payne, subtle as ever I see. 
The crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him, wham, on the head, smack, killed him cold. Hmm, a customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say he was... The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright, a pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life, a bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. It's a metaphor for wine. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. So many grapes. Drinking so many grapes is terrible for you. It's a lot of sugar. Alright, weapon added to our evidence. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record. Right, right, I've heard of that. That's the tutorial thing that you're going to tell me about now. Use the court record button to look at the evidence so far. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right, the court record button. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. I press it. Alright, we got our trusty attorney's badge, although this is a different one since we're not Phoenix. We've got autopsy report. Time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Death caused by a single blow to the forehead. That's going to be important. Crime photo one. Let's check it out. Bonked him through his hat and then he just keeled over. What a pity. That's the card game we saw at the beginning. Deadly Bottle bears the defendant's Mr. Wright's prints. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's what we've got to work with. It's not much. So the victim was a customer at this restaurant? But just who was this, um, Shady Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? A blues traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He only returned to this country recently, though his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That too is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Borscht Bowl Club on the night of the crime. If they'd only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim sighted the defendant's piano playing? That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill, of which he had very little. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. Alright, we looked at that earlier. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself. In... not in California it isn't. But in Japanifornia it is. Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. One who plays card games. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that. A game in the purest sense. A competition, your honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits. A silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Uh, come again? The cards on the table had blue ba backs, your honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present and impress women. <laughs> Which only I can do because women love my long golden tresses. That will be our first order of business here then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. Hmm. Gambling isn't illegal in Japan either, apparently? That's very interesting. Japanifornia has its own laws. It's very strict laws because it is both places and neither place. My pleasure. <laughs> This is it, my first trial. Here goes nothing, or hopefully something. Witness testimony. We know the drill, and this should be the easy one since it's this game's tutorial case to a certain extent. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested co customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. Well, we play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is, a game. And our customers are happy. 
Hmm, a pianist who can't play piano. Better than a defense attorney who can't defend, right? <laughs> you apologize to see. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Are you all right? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? Who oh, no! It's a, a figure of speech justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels str my brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times, though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher course in cross-examination? No. We don't need that. We don't need that! We know the drill! Let's just go! No need for help here, sir! I think I've got this one covered! I'm fine! I think you'd better do more than think. You know it, or you do not. Like Zyoda would say, it's a little green muppet. I'm fine! The cords of steel are ready for battle! My weapons, press and present. Find any inconsistencies and lies in the testimony, and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies. Lies! Phoenix Wright! As if Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it! The defense may begin the cross-examination. Alright, let's figure out... Cause there's something fishy about this card game already. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. That's weird already. You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes, when customers demand it. So, I play them one song. That's usually all they want. Was that supposed to be a boast just now? The title of pianist is a mask. A respectable face I wear for the world at large. Then why are you really at the Borscht Bowl Club? My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. <laughs> Do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Uh, yes. Your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. <laughs> what? I've played poker for seven years in that little room. Wow. And I've never lost. Once. What? You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's, uh, quite a draw. That is, uh, I'm quite a draw. <laughs> Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once? Is that even possible? The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. Always be pressing. The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction. Yeah, cheating, cheating seems likely. There's quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. B black market! All in the past, things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. A smoky room. Gambling hoods. You know, just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. The bosses gather on the table, cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but a little else. The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they came to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good clean fun. Hmm... The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Okay. Two decks of cards. A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. 
Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor. Each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Uh, incidentally, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yeah, a game of hands. This competition you're talking about, I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. Th that's right! It was a simple game after all! Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment that the crime occurred, yet you claim no connection to the crime. Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Uh, of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. I completely let that one slip by! Don't despair yet, Justice. Uh, sir? Right, there's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand, and I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press, and I've got myself a whole new testimony. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. But your fingerprints are on it, Phoenix. It! What's up, Nick? S silence! The defendant has the right to refuse to testify. I, I haven't forgotten everything about the law. But why? That clearly puts you at a disadvantage. And it's your job to turn that around in our favor, yes? Great. Like I didn't have enough to do already. Justice, didn't you detect anything odd about that testimony? Huh? Wait. Something he said did ring a little strangely. Just one thing. Now what was it? When you figure it out, I'd suggest presenting evidence. Evidence that contradicts the testimony. Contradiction of Mr. Wright's testimony? Alright, I better check the court record. I can't imagine Mr. Wright lying in a testimony. Isn't it a little early to be jumping to conclusions? This is your first cross-examination. Take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. Uh, right, I got it. I'm fine. Time to listen to that testimony again. Alright. We've gone through everything, and all we really have is the fact that he says he never touched the murder weapon, even though... Oh yeah, bears his fingerprints, so this has his fingerprints on it. So, that's a pretty clear contradiction. Explain yourself, Nick! So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon. This grape juice bottle, right? So I said... Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. <laughs> and it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. <laughs> Objection! No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears, and our case. B -b but what about my cords of steel? Any anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove he did it. Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted, and there can only be one reason for that. Because <laughs> he was going ka chonk. Yes, to brain someone with the bottle. Aha! <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. 
Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. <laughs> Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the, on the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still that... Really? Mm, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? <clears throat> oh, nice! The victim was murdered in a small room in a basement, two floors down from the ground level. Two floors? Wow! Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in his hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. My scene. And this is the phone that made the call? Ah. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so chose. Yet he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? <laughs> nice save, Mr. Gavin. I better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. T toyed I assure you, no one is more serious about... What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive weakness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So someone else is in the room the night of the crime. That must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up to now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? They will. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. 